In this video, we're going to learn about linear equations and how to apply them to real-world scenarios. You may have graphed linear equations in other math courses. Linear equations create a line when they're graphed on the 2D plane. They're most commonly written in the form y equals mx plus b. y and x are the variables. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. What the y value becomes depends on what x value we sub into the equation. They will remain x's and y's in the equation because they can be equal to any real numbers. That's why they're called variables. Their values can vary. M and B will be fixed real numbers. M represents the slope of the line or the rate of change, and B is the y-intercept. Because of this, y equals mx plus b is called the slope-intercept form. There are other ways to write a linear equation, but slope-intercept form is the most popular. That's because that form is very easy to graph. Looking at the equation y equals 2x minus 5, we can easily identify that m equals 2 and b equals negative 5. You begin at b on the y-axis and then move according to the slope. Slope represents the change in y over the change in x. A shortcut to remember is rise over run. The numerator of the fraction tells you how many steps to move up and down, and the denominator tells you how many steps to move to the right. You can move left, but it's more common to place the negative sign on the numerator than in the denominator. If we wanted to graph y equals 2x minus 5, we would identify the y-intercept and the slope. b is negative 5, and the slope is 2, which we would write as 2 over 1. Now go to negative 5 on the y-axis and mark, make a dot to mark the point. Then from b, count up 2 units and write 1 unit, and then make a dot to mark the next point on the line. You can repeat this process as many times as you need to mark the path of the line, but 2 dots is really all you need. Then draw a line connected, connecting the two dots, marking the ends with arrows as the lines extend infinitely in both directions, and you have graphed your equation. Let's look at a few more examples. y equals a negative 3x plus 1. The slope is negative 3 over 1, and the y-intercept is a positive 1. The negative slope means that the line will move down from the b to get to the next point on the line. Positive slopes create lines that go up from left to right, and negative slopes create lines that go down from left to right. I'll mark the b on the positive 1 on the y-axis, and then I'll count down 3 units, and then write 1 unit, and mark the second point on the line. Then connect the dots to mark the line. y equals 2 fifths plus 3. m is 2 over 5, and b is positive 3. Begin at the positive 3 on the y-axis, count up 2 units, and then over to the right 5 units, Mark the second point and draw the line. One more. y equals negative 3 fourths minus 3. m is negative 3 over 4 and b is a negative 3. Begin at negative 3 on the y-axis, count down 3 units, and write 4 units. Mark the second point and draw the line. You can also graph lines on your TI-83 or 84. You'll click on the Y button underneath the screen. The screen that you see on your PowerPoint will type up, pop up, and then you can type in the equation, and then you'll hit graph, and then the line will appear. This is helpful for when you have large numbers like y equals a negative 200x plus 75. Instead of creating a graph that has wide intervals, you can put the equation in your calculator and see the graph. When I put this into my calculator, and then I hit graph, I don't really see anything. I have a line that's going straight up and down, which we know is not really what our graph looks like. So you'll often need to use the zoom feature that's underneath the screen. The calculator by default will set up the plane from negative 10 to positive 10. To extend the plane, the fastest way is to press zoom and then select either Z fit or zoom fit. It depends on what version of the calculator you have. Zoom fit will look at the equation and create the best version of the picture. So that way you can actually see what your graph looks like. There are other ways to change the scale of your graph. Zoom fit is just the fastest way to do it, although it's not always the best way to do it. Graphing lines, as you can see, is not all that complicated, so using the calculator may not seem helpful. However, using the graphing calculator to graph the line will allow us to do much more than just see a picture. Normally, the equation will represent a scenario, and then once you have that equation, you'll need to sub-values into it. If we use the calculator to sketch a line, 
it will also generate an infinite list of values. So let's look at the calculator's table feature while using a linear modeling question. An employee at a jewelry store earns a base salary of $2,000 a month plus a 5% commission on all sales. Model the employee's monthly salary with a linear equation and then find the following. One, how much will the employee's salary be if they sell $5,000 worth of jewelry? Two, how much jewelry would they need to sell in order to earn $2,800 in a month? So let's first create our model. We're going to let x equal the amount of jewelry sold and let y equal the total monthly salary. The B value will always be the fixed value. Here the fixed value is 2000 since the base salary will always be $2,000 a month. While the M is also fixed, it's one that can be scaled. The employee will always earn 5% of the sales, but we don't really know how many sales he or she will have, so that percent will vary. That change has to represent every different possible sales total, so our M is 5%. Since you can't multiply or add percents, we'll change 5% to a fraction or a decimal. I'm going to use an M value of 0 0.05, but you can use 5 over 100. 0 0.05 is easier to type into the calculator. If we're going to sketch this by hand, we would have used the 5 over 100 so that we can see how many steps in each direction to take to get from one point to the next. I'm going to enter 0.05x plus 2000 into the calculator and hit graph. I'm going to need to use the zoom feature to change the scale of the graph to see the line. The line is going up since it has a positive slope, but it doesn't look like it's going up as fast or very fast since 0.05 is a, a small number. The larger the absolute value of the slope, the faster the line will move up or down. So now that we have our model, we can let 5000 equal x to find out how much the monthly salary will be. If I hit second mode, I can go to the main screen. And then I can type in 0 0.05 times 5,000 plus 2,000 and hit enter, and the salary will be $2,250. I also have the option of using the table in the calculator since I already have the equation enter. First I'll hit second and then window to bring up the table set window. You're going to arrow down to the independent and then put the cursor on ask and hit enter. If I hit graph again, I'll see the linear model, but now I'm going to hit second graph and a blank table will appear. Type in 5000 and hit enter and the calculator will automatically do the substitution for you. This is really helpful when you have multiple substitutions. For example, now I can type in any number and it will automatically solve the equation for me. However, this only works when you're plugging in an x value. You can't plug in a y value. So for the next question, we're going to have to solve this by hand. How much truly would they have to sell if they wanted to earn a monthly salary of $2,800? We know it's more than 5000 since that was only 2250 but how much more? Our monthly salary is represented by y, so y now equals 2800 We'll need to solve for x to see how much jewelry we'll need to sell. Start by subtracting 2000 from both sides, and we now have 800 is equal to 0 0.05 times x. Divide both sides by 0 0.05, and we see we'll need to sell $16,000 worth of jewelry to make $800 worth of commission. So we're going to need to significantly up our sales game to get to $800 worth of commission. This type of example is by far the most common type of linear modeling question. There's a fixed cost price that represents B, and a cost or price that can vary depending on how much of what the story says you're doing or selling that will represent M. While they can, can become more involved, it's the type of story in the jewelry store question you see most often in the classroom and in the real world. Often real world applications are easy equations with more complicated conversions or stricter parameters. So here's a short one that I was looking at over the weekend about dealing with the cost of electricity. In my area, electricity costs about nine cents a kilowatt hour. And I needed to choose between two different types of routers, both of which would be running all the time every minute of the day. 
Uh, and if the lower wattage router needed 200 watts to run, how much will the lower wattage router cost a year? So this was a short equation that involved some conversions. The equation was simple, y equals 0.09x. It was x that was all the work. The router was told to me in watts, not kilowatts. Plus, I wanted a yearly cost, so I was going to need to complete some conversions. 200 watts is 0.2 kilowatts. And since I'm billed hourly, I need to know how much I would be paying for every hour of the year. So 0.2 times 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year leaves me with the router using about 1752 kilowatt hours per year. 1752 kilowatt hours is X. 1752 times 0.09 is 157.68. So the router is going to cost me about $158 a year around. The router was going to cost $200, however, the less expensive model actually used more energy. So in the long run, the more expensive router was actually cheaper. A little bit of math can often save you a whole lot of money. And these are the types of problems that you will often see pop up in your everyday life.